Honourable Vice Minister of the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, um, Paul Tsanka from UNFCCC, Salim Al Haq, uh, friends, ladies and gentlemen, we've um, we've been here for several days in this very large room, which has sometimes shrunk uh, to be half the size, and we've networked furiously and had some fantastic experiences in Vietnam. And uh, it's impossible to try and pull this rich experience together. So what I I've uh, you know. So Dr. Salim's graciously given me this slot to, to share a few reflections to a certain extent on, on where we go from here. CDKN, my organization, which is funded by the British and Dutch governments, has been one of the sponsors of this event, and we're sponsoring also CBA 7, which will be held in Dhaka around mainstreaming, taking this agenda forward. And we're very keen to see this as not just two conferences. This is about a process uh, and a dialogue which we want to take through with you. You are the, the core of the community of practice, as we've been reminded by Salim. There are many out there who've been watching us, which I find a bit scary, but we are accountable to a much larger group of people who are also committed uh, members of this community of practice on, on CBA. And I think what, what I've sensed, and many of us probably have reinforced, and those who've come to this new have sensed, there is a huge amount of momentum around CBA. Um, and I think you've come uh, from your places within Vietnam and from far afield because this is a key place where these important issues of adaptation can be uh, given that extra boost and that momentum and uh, that injection of knowledge on a, at least an annual basis. But let's make this an ongoing process. But I would argue that this isn't yet sufficient. Um, and I think one of the ways to scale this effort of CBA upwards is to work closely with policymakers. And it's been, it's been wonderful to see the growing community that is incorporated not only from the NGOs to scientists but also policymakers in this process. So it's a great honor to have the Vice Minister of Agriculture uh, and Rural Development of Vietnam here now because I think that's a ministry that's been very proactive in this field in Vietnam and well known in the international community for its proactive stance on these issues of adaptation. But of course we see plenty of evidence of communities taking the lead on adaptation. They're on the front line and we need to be reminded of that. That autonomous adaptation is happening uh, we haven't captured it, and that's fine. We don't need to capture it all. We need to respect that that's going on. But is that alone going to be transformational gonna, to, in terms of scale, and I think also in speed, to address the challenge that we've heard about, two degrees or more, the, the, the rapid increase that we heard very clearly uh, that is affecting the livelihoods in Newtok in Alaska just half an hour ago, I think is a stark reminder of the need for speed of action. So how can we as a community be the accelerators of that change? I think we want to think about, we're committed to this, but we do need to accelerate action. So working with governments, working with the science community, working with the media community, many of you here from the world of communications, um, how can we develop practical examples to influence policymakers, enable communities to take actions themselves? In CDKN, we've been doing this at practical levels in some 30 or 40 countries around specific issues with the Punjab Disaster Management Authority in, in, in Pakistan, with uh, the government of Nepal and the World Food Programme around adaptation and food security in, in insecure food districts in Nepal. Um, but we need to take a dynamic approach to CBA. We, we must look ahead too. So I think this isn't just about how we are now building back. It's about building back better and responding to the predicted changes that will be occurring in, in both the biophysical and to a certain extent in the economic fields. We need to address adaptation at multiple levels. I think that's self-evident. And we need to connect the, the top down with the bottom up. That's much much heard. But I think there's a, there's a very important space in the middle too. It's been, it's been exciting to hear about the work at city level here in, in, in Vietnam and at local government level in a number of other countries. So connecting the practitioners, the policymakers and the scientists with, with the communicators, as I say, at these multiple levels is key. And I think what we need is good evidence, um, we need finance, uh, and we need an integrated approach. The opening session of the 
conference, uh, Margareta Wallström set out very articulately the importance of good evidence. Um, and she referred to the IPCC, the International Panel on Climate Change's recent early re uh, launch report on special, special report, that is, on extreme events and disasters, the so-called SREX, which is a key report in, communicate, in, in bringing better evidence about the links between climate change and disasters, both um, slow onset and extreme events. The um, IPCC's fifth assessment report will give us more evidence in the next year or so. And I think we need your help as accelerators of this process to help communicate that science um, to policymakers. And we need a tool such as scenario planning and others to try and look ahead using that evidence place. As, as, as Atik said earlier, we need to be good at communicating uncertainty and, and working with the science and other communities to do that. So that's the evidence. On finance, that really matters. We've heard a bit about that from the World Bank and others just earlier. The importance of prioritization, the very important uh, issues around social accountability. How can we be ready to enable in a positive way the funds that hopefully will flow, the promised uh, 100 billion um, to communities that need it? We need to be on the front foot articulating to the international community and to national governments and to private sector, the three sources of finance, how money can be used effectively and demonstrably deliver impact around adaptation. And of course, this conference has also reminded us that, um, that CBA is not really different from development. This is about an economic development and a poverty reduction challenge. All citizens around the world wish to have their fair share of economic development. And there's a huge imperative to meet those needs uh, whilst climate change and disasters may be pulling us in the opposite direction. So we have to respect that climate change is not the only driver of change and therefore we need to take a very integrated approach to this. So I think we're aware of this. We often risk slipping slightly back into our climate change silo. So let's really work as we go out as accelerators thinking about an integrated approach. Um, Christiana Figueres, is the head of the UNFCCC. Paul, you should be talking about your boss, not me, but um, is very clear that there's only one path that countries have in the longer term in front of them, and that is a low carbon development path. Um, and we need to be looking at building resilience, but also thinking about tackling the issues of uh, emissions reductions. Um, and I think when I talk about integration, we need to look beyond the adaptation agenda to the issues of mitigation and low carbon uh, and sometimes expressed as green growth. The question all societies and communities face is what the speed and at what cost they're prepared to pay for that transition. Uh, we, we call this integrated approach in CDK and climate compatible development and we find that's a, that it's a very useful phrase for addressing the integrated ways of, of, of looking at the issues. But it's not just about responding to disasters, it's about also taking out the opportunity of new ways of development. A new industrial, um, green industrial revolution is how Lord Nicholas Stern calls it, and we need to be backing that. And what we're already seeing is a number of countries, a number of corporations and uh, companies, and many communities who are taking up that challenge already and innovating. Um, and we see here in Vietnam, uh, it's recently improved national climate change strategy addressing the need for greenhouse gas emissions reductions uh, and development of a green growth strategy. So finally, we need action on multiple levels. Um, we need action at the international level. We need nas national level action and leadership. We need action at the sub-national level and, of course, at community where it is already happening. And we recognize, of course, that a global deal will accelerate that process, um, but it may not come very quickly. Um, so. I would say, in conclusion, it's, it's with the communities is where we operate as, as a group of practitioners, CBA practitioners, it's with the communities where the accelerators will happen and where there is this huge potential of scale of change. And I think that's the power of, of, of this group working on this issue. Um, and so I hope as we leave here, we can see the way ahead to use this learning to accelerate that process of working with communities to drive change at these multiple levels. Thank you very much.